Meet our two protagonists vying for the royal title. First, former aircraft technician Monsieur Charles de Bourbon, who claims it belongs to him. Ceux qui sont pour euh, la cause de défense de la mémoire de Louis XVII et de combattre justement pour cette juste cause, bon, il me donne ce titre de monseigneur, de prince, comme j'ai le droit d'ailleurs de m'appeler, car on le veut ou non. Je suis prince de Bourbon jusqu'à preuve du contraire. And on the other side of the ring is the Duke de Beaufremont, a retired public relations agent who also claims royal ancestry. Alors, à titre personnel, c'est évidemment extrêmement important, étant donné que je m'occupe depuis très longtemps des, de la légitimité des aînés de la Maison de France. Set yourself back in time to the Chateau of Versailles in 1789. The French Revolution is starting to take shape, but this rich and luxurious palace is still home to this small boy, Prince Louis Charles, who's heir to the throne. His mother is Marie Antoinette. His father is King Louis XVI. Their other son has just died of tuberculosis. Over the next few years, the revolution against the royals begins to rage. The king is seized and imprisoned, finally guillotined in early 1793. Marie Antoinette is to suffer the same fate. She's wrenched from her children and also imprisoned. She's guillotined nine months after her husband. Her eight-year-old son Louis XVII is locked in a prison tower in solitary confinement. He suffers appalling conditions for two years, but eventually dies of tuberculosis. Or so the history books tell us. His heart is taken by one of the doctors who performs the autopsy, and it finally ends up in this small, dark church crypt amongst the coffins of past kings at the Basilica of Saint-Denis on the outskirts of Paris. For the record, it was normal practice to preserve the hearts of French royals. So, the small heart of a ten-year-old boy is now on public display for all to see. It seems straightforward enough, but can we really be sure this is the heart of Louis XVII? Well, here begins a journey to unravel a mystery that's developed over 200 years and involves a feud between two families that just intensifies with time. The crux of the bizarre battle that's captivated France appears to centre on this contention from Monsieur de Bourbon. The heart on show must belong to Louis XVII's brother, because the young prince was really smuggled out of his cell at the height of the French Revolution and lived happily ever after in Holland. So, Holland is our starting point, and what we find in the town of Delft is a grave marked Louis XVII. This is the link de Bourbon relies on. Local historians, though, tell us a German man called Norndorf lies here. No one disputes that he was de Bourbon's ancestor, but Norndorf was an ex-convict with a gift of the gab who convinced a local lawyer he was a French prince, and the lawyer wrote out the death certificate accordingly. He was a handy barrister. And once... Uh, this obstacle taken, it was only a small step to put the name of Louis XVII uh, on the grave, uh, on the, on the uh, tombstone. Still, this historian was intrigued enough to organise DNA testing on Norndorf's bones, compared with a sample of Marie Antoinette's hair. It came up negative. So, we head back to Paris to check on Monsieur Charles de Bourbon. Or should we call him the Prince? Because at his headquarters in an old terrace house, in one of the more down-market areas of Paris, he insists the findings don't convince him. Surrounded by his royal memorabilia and loyal band of female followers, he admits that, yes, Norndorf is his relative, but the scientists used the wrong bones, you know. And anyway, they're just part of a conspiracy with the French government and his arch-rival, the Duc de Beaufremont. It's all becoming rather frustrating. Se promener un peu euh, avec une carte d'identité comme j'ai française de Bourbon, c'est-à-dire on me voit de Bourbon, Monsieur de Bourbon, mais 
lorsque je passe, la personne euh, se retournant peut me voir avec un point d'interrogation dans le dos. Elle m'imagine comme ça. Est-ce, est-il ou n'est-il pas Voilà, c'est gênant que dans cette position. Il est, il est vrai que j'ai tout de même un très grand soutien dans mon pays. His chief supporter is this French literature teacher, who always refers to Monsieur de Bourbon as the prince. She's also into the conspiracy theory and always wears dark glasses in case the French government is spying on her. So why has this become so important to you? Because it's, for me, the memory of France and of the, it's our history, our memory and the honour of the royal family. Fair enough, but what about the Duke de Beaufremont, who also considers it a case of family honour? We catch up with him back at the Basilica, and he feels he's had a victory. He's organised DNA testing of a piece of the heart, and it comes up trumps, genetically matching samples of Marie Antoinette's hair, and proving it's the Duke's family that carries the royal bloodline. What's more, the establishment backs him. The Archbishop will allow us to interview the Duke in the Basilica, but not that imposter de Bourbon. C'est évidemment très difficile. Saint-Denis est un, un, un lieu officiel où reposent tous les rois de France. Maintenant qu'il est prouvé que M. de Bourbon ne peut pas être le descendant de Louis XVII, bon, qu'il se promène comme un visiteur, c'est possible, mais faire des déclarations à la télévision de sa part euh, est une chose qui est impossible. But hang on a minute, as we wander around the tombs with the Duke, isn't that Monsieur de Bourbon in the distance? Will there be blood on the floor here? But no, they pass like ships in the night, refusing to acknowledge each other. And once the Duke is out of the way, the ever-defiant Monsieur de Bourbon and his merry gang take great delight in pointing out physical similarities with past kings. Don't, for a moment, think this is the end of the saga. The would-be prince has offered to put himself up for DNA testing. He just hasn't gotten around to it yet. Furthermore, his only son will carry on the battle when he dies. Maybe this is one of those mysteries that will never disappear entirely.